I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. And if you happen to be scrolling by and you don't know what's going on, uh, my name is Paul Turner from the discipleproject.net. And I answer youth ministry questions every Wednesday, uh, every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, I try to help the local youth pastor by answering their questions. I answer, usually answer three questions unless there are quite more questions, you know, that come in during the live stream. And so if you are a youth pastor that happens to be joining me today, well, welcome in. Appreciate you being here. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Where are you from? Tell me where you're from in the country. I would love to know. Uh, and then just put that in the chat. And then uh, if you have a youth ministry question, well, just go ahead and put that in the chat as well. Let's go ahead and get in here, and we're going to get to question number one. So question number one is, how can I communicate with parents that will open up a conversation? Now, the, the question itself is a good question, right? And the, I think the question is about just dialogue, right? Because so many times uh, youth pastors are in the dark. <laughs> we're in the dark normally, but we're in the dark, especially when it comes to uh, when, it, when it comes to talking or dealing with parents, uh, we sometimes don't know what's going on. And because we don't know what's going on, sometimes that's scary. Because no feedback, if you're a feedback junkie, like I used to be, I'm not as much anymore, but but if you're a feedback junkie where you say, I need feedback, I need to know how I'm doing, I need to know how the youth ministry is going, I need you to tell me, right? Uh, first of all, if you don't know how the youth ministry is going, I <laughs> you might want to check with you first, have a conversation with the Lord. Uh, and I joke there, but I think there's a, I think there's a, first of all, a sense of confidence that you have to have in yourself that you're, you're doing what you can do, right. And do a little audit in your, in your own self. If you know, things are not right or not well in certain areas, don't be shocked or surprised if parents give negative feedback, right? So you have to, uh, be able to answer those questions that when a conversation does open up, right? Sometimes it's, how can I keep my parents will open a conversation? Now, here's the deal. You don't know what kind of conversation is going to open up. Uh, that con You're looking for positive feedback. You're looking for constructive criticism. And sometimes you get none of that. So be careful what you ask for. You're wanting to open up a conversation. Parents have a different idea of what that conversation is going to be based on the, the status of the youth ministry, based on how well the youth ministry is going, based upon your actions, based upon you as a person sometimes, uh, it's based on whether their kid is liking the youth ministry or not, whether, the, whether that student likes you or not. And so when I talk about, you know, opening a communication, like I said, be careful what you're asking for, because you're saying, well, I want to get in there and I really want to get to know these parents. I want to know all these things. Well, be careful. Be careful what you ask for. Uh, I think you have to be ready for that other conversation uh, because you want to know what, uh, here's what the deal, all right? We're the same in this regard, right? Because we both, we all want to know, you know, what, what kind of programs do our parents want? Uh, what do their kids like? Uh, you know, what, um, you know, what is the youth ministry offering my child, right? What are the events? What's the programming? And parents, a lot of times are have the mindset of of two things, how much and what time. Those are the only two things they want to know. And I and in my younger days, younger Paul, younger Paul was, you know, offended by <laughs> offended by that in some ways. Like, what do you mean? You only want to know two things? You only want to know what time in this? Some parents, yes, because they're that's their level of because they're so used to picking up their kids, they're so used to paying out. Because listen, parents are paying the school, the sports team. They're schedule driven. They they understand this, and so the default mode. And that's why I don't. Old Paul doesn't blame parents today. Old Paul understands. Old Paul has raised three adult children, has been through this, and so understands that. The how much and what time are relevant questions to a parent. And that's information you have to be able to give them, right? 
what time's the event, how much it is. And you're going to have to say that 25 times. Do you know why? Because they're hearing the same things from about 10 different groups, uh, right? School groups, hobby groups, uh, you know, karate, you know, there's other things. I know it's hard for our minds to figure that our, that they're, the children are involved in, in other things besides youth ministry. And, uh, and so I think as a youth pastor, you have to get better at communicating. So let me offer a few things you can do that. What will open up conversation, right? So let me give you a few things. Let me give you, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll give you six. How about this? I'll give you six, six ways to engage parents. And you're going to have to, by the way, I'm going to give you six things and you might have to try all six. You might have to try 20. You may have to keep flipping it over and over again and trying different iterations of it. But Paul, can I just do one thing and parents respond? No, because all parents are different, right? Just like you like to engage differently, um, you're, you, you know, there's your <laughs> the parents are going to want to engage differently somehow. So you may have to have multiple ways of communicating with parents, right? Texting is one, right? So if you want to be uh, communicating, ask parents, say, parents, would you like to be on a uh, a text list of some kind for events uh, that we are having, right? You'll receive one text a month about the event or about the thing, and that's all I'm going to say. You get one text. You're not texting them about 25 things. This is the event text. This is the thing where I tell you about the events that are coming up, and I'm only going to text you one time, right? That's one way of doing it. Now, another way you can do it is you can engage, once again, the purpose is to open up conversation. Well, a text definitely opens up conversation, right? Uh, part of that text could be, it could just be, that's an event text, but there's different things it could be, right? Hey, would you like a morning scripture? Would you like a morning devotion for parents, right? That, that text that you're going to send them. It's not going to have 10 things. It's not going to have a devotion and a thing and a thing and a thing. Pick the thing you want to do. And just and let it be that you you can't text them about everything because they're getting texts from the football coach, from the karate teacher, from the band director. You're one of like seven other ten other people, not to mention their bosses and other people. Okay, so texting is one way. Can you create a text list with them with the parents who want to be? It's opt in. It's not hey I'm going to gather up all the numbers and just send this out. No 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 no. If you want to be in the text thread, you opt in. It's not, I'm going to add you in and you're just going to get random messages from somebody on their phone that they don't know who you are. Okay. You have to, you have to be smart about it. Okay. So just send them a thing. So how do I do that, Paul? Well, another way, and this may be the initial way you want to do it is surveys. So you send them a survey. How would you, what is the main way you'd like me to communicate with you? Or what is the best way for me to communicate with you? Is it text? Is it email? Is it um, snail mail? Just put something, put some, put a stamp on it. I'll throw it. I'll send it to the house. Okay. Uh, is it something along those lines? And put a list of choices. Right. What are ways that you're going to do best to communicate? You put. You can put video in there. Uh, you can put a. a, um, a you know, something like a Slack thread or a group me, you know, what is the best way you'd like to communicate with the youth ministry, right? What is good for you? And that will tell you how many, that will tell you how many parents are interested in what, which will then tell you how many different things maybe you need to do. Now, just because they choose it, doesn't mean you have to run five different things. Okay. The best way, that means somebody's going to have to jump on board and figure out technology. Some parents are going to have to jump on board. You're going to make allowances for those parents who have zero ideas how to do anything, right? So go ahead and ask a survey and say, here's how. Here's the first way to open up a conversation. How? What is the best way for me to communicate with you? And if it's a newsletter, if it's a, this or it's that, find out from the beginning what it is, Okay. Uh, the second thing I think you have to do is no matter what you do, no matter what the, what the form of conversation is, uh, it has to be about them. What you're doing, right? If you want to do parent ministry, 
make the engagements about them. Make it about their family. Make it about what's good for them, not just what's good for you. What's good for the youth program? What's good? And yes, you're going to emphasize that. I'm going to get there, right? Give me some time. I'm going to get there after a little bit, okay? But you've got to make the communication about them, right? Why is this in your best interest, right? And it can't be, you can't have 25 events a month, you, right? That's not going to go good for you. You can't, you can't have a gajillion things going on. They got to be at small group. They got to be at this event. And you got 20, you can't, you can't do it. They're not going to come to everything. And parents are going to opt out of whatever communication is if you're communicating with them too much. But so whatever you do, make the communication about them. Okay. The third thing is it's got to be encouraging, right? You're making it about them, but you know what? You have to keep in mind, parents, if you're doing good parent ministry, you got to remember, you got to feed the parent. The parent is the one who drives those children to everything. The parents are the one who make decisions on whether kids are going to camp or not. Parents are making the decision on what their children are involved with. And so they should. Why would you not want to encourage them? Why would you not want to say, listen, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to send something encouraging to you. It can't just be Here's the event, here's how much it is, and and here's how much it costs. That is what they want to hear, yes, and you must include that, but there's no reason why you can't throw in a little encouragement, right? And just, hey, good morning. I hope you're having a great day. I want to let you know I prayed for you this morning, right? And hopefully you did, and you're not just saying that, but you're really praying for them. And so when you do that, offer them some encouragement, okay? Ask if you want to open up conversations why not have prayer requests, right? Say, I hey, listen, at the end of all your communications, just say, hey, look, do you have any prayer requests, anything I can be praying about? Well, that, that's one, that's opt-in. That's allowing parents to say, I want to share this with you. And so, you know, uh, maybe, or and, and maybe they won't share it in a thread. Hey, just say, hey, look, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to text me separately outside of the group if you want to do that. And that way, no, not everybody knows their business because there's parents in the group that don't want other parents knowing their business, okay? So ask them to text you outside of that or email you outside of that and, and all those things, okay? So ask for prayer requests. Uh, a book club. There are going to be some parents who are going to be into it, some parents are not. But once again, there's no reason why you couldn't start a book club around a particular book. It doesn't have to be a Sunday school class. It doesn't have to be a Zoom call. It could just be, hey, I'm reading this. Do you want to read along with me? Here's a link to the Amazon book. Go ahead and get it. And uh, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts, right? So you're reading together and you're creating an opportunity for conversation, okay? <clears throat> now, the last thing I would say this, and I think this is number seven. I think I threw text in there. So we're going to we're gonna say this is going to be number seven, but it is having a newsletter, okay? Which brings me to the fact this, I'll show you, and if you're not a subscriber of my newsletter, I'm going to show you how I set up my newsletter so that I can have engagement with you. Here's a simple, a simple way for me to do this. So let me go ahead and jump into the newsletter here. Uh, we have our newsletter. And if you're not, like I said, a subscriber, I'll put a link down below and you can get it then. But if you're going to include something in a newsletter, I would keep it for parents, keep it to three things, right? So the first, these are all the things you get. These are all the articles and stuff that I send to you all who are subscribers. I talk about uh, trends and culture. I talk, and right, so if you're going to put trends and culture, one article, something that's going on, okay? Something that's happening large, right? Something maybe national that's happening. Um, and if you want to put something... Uh, like I said, an article that's going on, right? I, I put in here for you, the youth pastor, like skills and wellness, something that's going to benefit you. Um, you know, uh, I put little jobs in there. If you're looking for a job, uh, I post jobs in there because people reach out to me and say, hey, Paul, <clears throat> can you do this? And then I have videos, right? Things like a game or uh, talk about prizes in youth ministry. Um, I Sometimes I share youth ministry from around the world, um, I get uh, different, uh, you know, videos that are going to be engaging for you, uh, something funny. Then I put something like what I'm reading. 
So here's a book I'm reading called Raise the Stay. I've already read it, but uh, I've read it. It's called Raise the Stay. Great book. Highly recommend it. Uh, and then I put resources and services, things that I offer uh, to you as a youth pastor, right? So whether it's my store or the podcast or one-on-one coaching or my monthly mentor or the new youth you know, new youth pastor bundle that I, I have put together if you're a new youth pastor, right? So I, if you're going to do a newsletter, uh, I, I would say something from culture, okay? Put in there something from culture. And put in there uh, something local, right? Maybe something's going on and you, hey, look, here's an idea. Maybe you don't have an event that month, but something's going on in your town that says, hey, just want to let you know, here's a family-friendly event that you can get together with your kids and go do something fun, right? That's simple enough, right? So you're feeding the family. You're saying, hey, here's something for you. And by the way, right, I give you I give you all those videos and all those things, but then I also put a little bit of something there for me that says, hey, I have some resources you may be interested in. So when you do something nationwide culture, you do something local, something that's going to say, hey, this is a great idea. Let's, why don't you guys do this as a family this weekend? It'd be fun, right? Uh, and then you put at the at the end there, say, hey, what's happening, right? And you, the last thing you put on there is, Hey, by the way, here's what's coming up in youth ministry. Maybe you put three or four dates, you put the times, you put how much they cost, don't make it long. If And at the end you say, if you have any questions, please let me know. And then they will go ahead and do that, right? Uh, and that what's that's the that's the call to action, right? So when I ask you to subscribe to the channel or subscribe to my newsletter, right? That's called a CTA. That's a call to action, and you are going to have a CTA in your newsletter. What is the call to action? You can't do fifty things. You can only do one thing. If if you put in what's happening and camp is a big deal, don't put anything else. Hey, be sure to sign up for camp this week. That's it. You're asking them to do one thing, not 10 things, right? Don't give them 50 things to do because they have a list from their school. They have a list from their coaches. They have a list from other things. They don't need a list from us. Make it simple. Ask them to do one thing that you're really wanting them to do.